Hey guys, and welcome to Taylor Tech. This week we're going to be looking at this. This is the Behringer XM8500 dynamic cardioid microphone. And it's the microphone that I've been using as my daily driver for about the past two weeks. So in a nutshell, this microphone is an amazing value for the price that you pay for it. Sound-wise, it is the equal of microphones that are about five times the price, although it may not have quite their level of durability. So what would the use case for this microphone be? Basically, you would want to use this microphone uh, for any general microphone purposes where you don't need a specialty microphone of another type or in any situation where you think that the microphone might be at risk for damage, such as on a stage or where kids are going to have access to it. Like here at my desk, my kids run around all the time and I wouldn't want a really expensive mic on there because there's a good chance that they're going to play with it. From a physical overview, uh, this microphone has a sturdy die cast metal body that uh, the rest of everything is machined out of. You can see, let's take it apart here. Um, you can see, I mean, it's very heavily constructed uh, from the body standpoint. The uh, capsule itself, on the other hand, is actually plastic. I was a little surprised. Um, this whole mic capsule is plastic. It looks like it's kind of pressed in there. And in my case, it was pressed in a little bit crooked, although it doesn't seem to be affecting the sound of the mic at all. And the uh, grill ball that's on top of it is a heavy metal that, you know, no flexibility to it. It feels like it's going to take a, more than a few drops and still work just fine. I have kind of bang tested this mic a few times where, you know, I've knocked it on stuff and dropped it and done other things. And it, you know, fits into the same category of an SM58 where, you know, you can just about drive a nail with it and it's still going to work afterwards. Also, the mic comes with a nice plastic carrying box. It also came with a plastic mic clip which you can see here, and uh, I've actually, I've enjoyed this mic clip. It works better than some of the others that I've worked with in the past that barely held the microphone. This one, on the other hand, puts a nice firm grip on it, and that mic's not going anywhere once it's in that clip. So from a spec sheet standpoint, this microphone is 150 ohm impedance. It's uh, got a 50 to 15K frequency response curve, and it's also got a negative 70 decibel sensitivity. So on that frequency curve, there's a nice mid-frequency rise so you get some brilliance to the vocals. However, that negative 70 decibel sensitivity is really low. Um, it's actually even low for uh, dynamic microphones which have low sensitivity to begin with. So you're going to need a lot of gain to drive this microphone. Uh, the other thing that I'm worried about with this microphone from a limitation standpoint is that plastic capsule on the inside. The fact that it's kind of crooked in there and that it feels just kind of like cheap plastic uh, gives me some concerns about what the durability would be like if it ever managed to hit on that capsule directly. Although I don't take it apart that often um, at all. There's no reason to. So, you know, I don't see that as being a long-term problem with it unless it takes a really bad spill and lands on the concrete or something like that. One thing that this mic definitely has going for it that you won't see with uh, other microphones of its same audio quality level is the price. Um, it is only $20 on average on Amazon with prime shipping, which is just phenomenal, especially for the uh, the quality that you get with it. When I picked it up, I kind of didn't think it was going to be worth much. You know, $20 is cheap, cheap for a mic. And, you know, that it, uh, I was surprised at how well it performed for that price. You know, it's also, it's very easy to use. It's a dynamic cardioid mic. So you don't have to worry about being super sensitive and careful with it. It doesn't need a shock mount. Um, and it's basically it's going to do what you need it to do with you know not a lot of effort on your part and it also it doesn't need phantom power so anything that you plug it into it will provide a signal to from a value perspective it's off the charts uh, so let's take a quick listen to it so you can see what this microphone sounds like for yourself okay so now we're using the uh, the Behringer XM50 XM8500 um, to get an audio sample as you can see it works really well. Now you'll notice I do have a foam ball on the microphone and that's because I've found that while they say that they've got a pop filter built into that grill, it's a very thin piece of foam and you're still going to get a lot of breathing noises. Even with this foam ball on it, I still get a fair amount of breathing noise. It's not as bad though. Um, and I'm thinking that, whoops, excuse that. And uh, you know, I, I, it's good enough for my purposes. If I you know, was going to be doing more work with it, I might actually even put a pop filter in front of it. But for what I do, this is this is sufficient. So, um, yeah, so this is the Behringer XM 8500. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Behringer XM 8500. I think it is an excellent value microphone for the content creator on a budget who is looking for something to 
uh, give them good sound quality and that they don't have to worry about being broken on accident. If you like this video, throw a thumbs up on it. Also leave any comments you have for me in the comments section below. If this is your first time to visiting my channel, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you found think this video would be helpful for people that you know, share it out to them. Finally, there's a list of places in the description that you can find me around on the internet, like Twitter, Reddit, Steam, uh, and NoQuarter.org, my gaming organization. I'd love for you to come and game with me. All right, guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.